Hey team, the uproar about the metaverse is not dying down. People are talking about it again and again, on and on, over and over, and the elephant in the room is obviously Meta, formerly Facebook. Zuck is so committed to the idea of dominating the metaverse that just before the company's 18th birthday, he changed the name from Facebook to Meta. He's throwing billions of dollars at this, and this is not a new development for them. Facebook bought Oculus for $2.3 billion in March 2014. That was eight years ago, and since then the company has poured billions more into developing the tech, including 10 billion just last year. They're acquiring developers and IP, and it's widely believed there is no way they're making money on Quest headsets. Meta headsets like the Quest 2 represent two thirds of VR headset ownership in the US. But at that $300 price tag, it barely covers the parts, let alone the research and development, engineering, marketing, and more. So with that kind of spend and that kind of head start, Meta is definitely going to win this, right? Right? Well, Maybe not. The race to win the metaverse has barely started. And there are very good reasons to believe by the time everybody is using this in every home and every office, Meta may not be the big winner. While Grayscale thinks the metaverse will be a trillion dollar a year opportunity, I'm not even entirely sure it will ultimately be called the metaverse. Remember when people called the internet the information superhighway or cyberspace? Nobody says those things anymore. The idea of the metaverse isn't even new. Neil Stevenson coined the term in 1992, but it's been called a lot of things over the years. Wired co-founder and futurist Kevin Kelly calls it the mirror world. Tech evangelist Robert Scoble is talking a lot about the spatial web. YouTuber Thrillseeker says he prefers the term the nexus. And if we know anything about Apple, they're not going to be using the branding and verbiage of a direct competitor, Meta Facebook. More on them later, but Apple will come up with some clever terms to describe all of this their own way. And being the brilliant brand marketers they are, it'll probably stick. I'm excited to see what they come up with. But for the sake of conversation, Let's just roll with that name, the metaverse. And let's look at the contenders. First, and maybe this isn't obvious, but Microsoft is a key player. YouTuber John Coogan recently did a great video covering why he thinks Microsoft will kill Meta when it comes to winning the metaverse race. And he makes some really strong points. Microsoft has a strong history in the space. The first Microsoft HoloLens shipped in March 2016, so Facebook Meta was a little bit earlier to the game in 2014, but not by much. Microsoft is also a huge player in gaming and IP, in addition to their decades as the operating system for PC gamers and the company behind 20 years of Xbox. Microsoft also owns a ton of gaming IP at this point. Of course they own Halo, pretty big franchise. They bought the studio behind Minecraft in 2014. Today, Minecraft has 126 million monthly active users. In September 2020, Microsoft bought ZeniMax Media, the owner of Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein, Rage, and more. And I'm sure you've heard about the most recent acquisition for $69 billion, Activision Blizzard, the company behind Call of Duty, Guitar Hero, Tony Hawk, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Destiny, Skylander, Hearthstone, Overwatch and freaking Candy Crush. Jeez, that is a heck of a catalog they've acquired. And it all plays into Microsoft's Game Pass, which is basically Netflix for gaming. Sign up for Game Pass and get all of this and more to play whenever you want. None of this even touches on the fact that Microsoft has been a major player in the operating system and enterprise productivity space for decades. People use Microsoft Office every day. People use Windows every day. They have all of the pieces to do this, but others have already talked about Microsoft's likely entry into the metaverse. Let's move on. Apple. People aren't talking about this one quite as much lately, and I just think that's because Apple's better at keeping secrets, not because there's nothing going on. Longtime tech fanboy and evangelist Robert Scoble recently made a long post on Facebook about why he's very bullish on the coming Appleverse. Like Microsoft, Apple already has so many pieces to do this. Let me ask you, do you own a VR headset? like a Quest 2? And did you buy that after trying it somewhere else? Most people want to try this stuff on before shelling out cash for it. And Apple has hundreds of physical stores where you can go try hardware. Meta is talking about opening some stores, but even if they fully commit to that, it will be years, many years, before they have what Apple has with their premier retail locations. Apple also has an incredible library of media, including Apple Music and Apple TV. And they're producing award-winning original content for Apple TV. Have you watched any original Facebook media? Can you name any Facebook Watch original shows? I didn't think so. I have watched some of them. They are not good. Apple already makes some of the best consumer hardware on earth. Hardware that's incredibly sophisticated with cameras, screens, motion tracking, even LiDAR. They're very good at 
this. People are already in on Apple hardware ecosystems. They're already committed to Apple payment systems. People already wear Apple wearables. And we look to these devices for exercise and health tips. Sounds perfect for a metaverse wearable. Apple has most of the world's developers integrated into their distribution and payment systems. Think about that. It's a huge advantage. Facebook has a lot of cool content on the Quest 2 store. It is nowhere near the size and scope of Apple's iOS developer network. The catalog and library that Apple has access to is incomparable. There's also the trust issue. For better or worse, people trust Apple way, way, way more than they trust Meta or even the other tech companies. It's a foregone conclusion at this point that Apple is developing some kind of AR VR headset. The device was going to be released this year, but you know, like everything in the world, it's likely now delayed till next year. Back to Robert Scoble. He seems to think that it'll be something akin to an AirPods Max with a display built in. Designer Ian Zelbo created some popular concept images showcasing the idea. It looks like an AirPods Max and Apple Watch had a baby. I'd buy that. Bloomberg has reported from a journalist with a great track record on getting this stuff right that the first device in this line has been delayed because of overheating issues. The report also says that Apple has lost a number of engineers to Meta who are trying to poach everybody in the field, from Microsoft, from Apple, anyone. It'll run its own OS, dubbed ROS, likely standing for Reality OS. When this thing finally comes out next year, I will get one to show you how it works. I'm very excited. Next, I'll be honest, Alphabet slash Google is a notable party missing from this game. There's likely a good reason for that. Google took a stab at a mixed reality headset years ago with Google Glass, and that didn't go well. The whole story of Google Glass is a story for another day, but suffice it to say that it was not well received, overpriced, awkward, ugly. Google made a deliberate effort to teach users to not be creepy while they wore this. They didn't want would-be brand ambassadors turning into glass holes. I remember when these came out, how much I personally wanted one, and I did get to try it, but the truth is that anyone I knew who owned one, who really wore it out in public, these were the nerdiest people I personally know. They were not the best at selling it. Google also dipped its toe into the VR world with Google Cardboard, launched in 2014, and Google Daydream, launched in 2016. But Daydream was canceled in 2019 after very low adoption, and Cardboard was canceled a year ago. Google got burned by Google Glass and its VR efforts were minimal and showed low promise. They're probably taking a wait and see approach. Of all the major players, they've been burned the most in this field and I wouldn't be surprised if they were happy to let others like Meta spend money, make mistakes, educate the market, and go through the general pain of being a pioneer. Next, Amazon. Amazon's a funny one. They have their Alexa ecosystem of hardware, but before that, Amazon jumped into the smartphone fray, and it also didn't go well. In October 2014, Amazon reported a $170 million write-off relating to the Amazon Fire Phone, which included the disposal of $83 million of unsold phones held in inventory. Like Google, they may not be eager to jump into a new field of hardware, operating systems, apps, and more, but Amazon already operates an essential piece of the metaverse. AWS. Amazon Web Web services. Consumers know them as the unrivaled online retailer, but over half of Amazon's revenue comes from AWS. It's so huge that when AWS goes down, basically the internet goes down. The amount of cloud compute resources necessary to run the metaverse will be massive, and Amazon doesn't have to change anything. They just keep running those servers, and they'll win a huge portion of the future internet. And of course, Meta. Can they spend their way to market dominance? Do they have the runway? You can be confident of one thing. This is a make or break issue for Zuck and Meta. Already a couple weeks ago, their stock plummeted. $230 billion down 27% after their quarterly earnings report came in lower than expected, and the growth of Facebook has tapered off. We've already mentioned the money they're burning trying to develop VR tech and drive headset adoption. Zuck is entirely committed to the metaverse, stakes the company's literal name and future on it. And if it doesn't work out, if they're burning too much cash, if people aren't adopting, if a competitor like Apple is beating them, this could break Zuck and Facebook's seeming dominance on the web. And I would like to point out that I called it. I've been saying for at least a couple years that Facebook was way more vulnerable than people typically believed. Young people don't like Facebook and increasingly don't even care about Instagram. And what is Facebook going to do about it? It can't deploy its usual playbook of copy, acquire, and crush. TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company worth hundreds of billions of dollars. When threatened by startups, Facebook has always copied, acquired, or crushed their competitors. You can't do that with ByteDance, at least not effectively. So this is it, the hill they will either conquer or die on. 
And to think Congress wants to break up Facebook and Meta. Guys, these tech companies will kill each other. You don't need the government to do it for you. Are there other players potentially poised to win the metaverse? Well, yeah, obviously lots of them. Disney, Netflix, Nvidia, Epic Games, Animoca Brands, Unity, Steam, Roblox, even Tesla. Snap has an existing social graph, a strong history with wearables and cameras, and already does avatars and filters. There are going to be many players in this space. Here's the thing about the metaverse. We don't know exactly what it will look like, but what we're talking about is the future internet. And while there are dominant players in today's internet, they don't own the whole thing. Meta owns social, but that grip is slipping. Google owns search, but that's just one piece. Google did own video, but that medium has evolved, and now TikTok has surpassed them in traffic. Amazon Amazon owns online retail and hosting. Microsoft owns operating systems and productivity. Will there be a single winner here? Probably not. Remember, the metaverse is a universe of universes. I think these players and many more will figure out a way to stake their claim doing one thing or another while intermeshing their services. Good thing too. I don't want one of these companies to run the entire metaverse. It's not even a metaverse if it's just one company running it. I've barely mentioned cryptocurrency and NFTs, but of course those are critical new pieces to the coming web. Sovereign ownership of digital objects that can travel with you from universe to universe. And these are probably going to be developed entirely outside of these major players. So what do you think? Will there be a dominant player? One of these groups mentioned in the video, or is it a dark horse that I've overlooked? What are the critical issues or critical players that you don't think are getting talked about quite enough? Let me know down in the comments. We will cover it all in a future video. Thanks team.